Picking up the pieces after a suspected human smuggling operation turns deadly off the coast of Point Loma. At least 32 people went overboard after the boat crashed. Three died. Tonight, new video and new details about what happened. Thanks for joining us. This is a nightly check in. I'm Mark Mullen. So, new cell phone video obtained by NBC7, which we'll show you right now, shows more than two dozen people trying to save themselves from a battered, overturned boat off of Point Loma. We spoke with a woman who watched. All of this unfold, a survivor told her more about what happened. We went to help them because we saw they were jumping and swimming and we saw all the things from the boat were coming out. Um, but they were they were just kind of standing there in shock. They left from like Rosarito area around like 11 p.m. at night and then they were in the water. From, no, they weren't swimming in the water. They were in the boat since like 4 a.m. without gaps. Survivors also told Emma Ramirez that the captain seemed to be high on drugs and was acting Oddly, just after they took off, Homeland Security has taken the lead in determining who is at fault. The Mexican consulate says the passengers on the boat are between 18 and 40 years old. There has been a lot of talk about herd immunity against COVID-19. That's when a large enough portion of the population becomes immune to an infectious disease. But with daily vaccination rates slipping a bit, there is a growing consensus among medical experts that reaching herd immunity completely is not likely to happen, at least not anytime soon. Doctors blame coronavirus variants and vaccine hesitancy among many people. One local doctor says there needs to be a better messaging from the public health perspective to get more people vaccinated. The outreach needs to be much better and we need to get the message out there that the vaccines save lives and that they are safe and that they are what will get us out of this pandemic. So doctors are now saying around 80% of the population would need to be vaccinated to, re to reach herd immunity. Here in San Diego, a little more than 40% of eligible county residents are fully vaccinated now, according to the health department. Evacuation orders also lifted Monday in the East County for Butterfield Ranch and the surrounding community after a wind-driven fire tore through the Shelter Valley area over the weekend. The Southern Fire has now burned more than 5,100 acres and crews are still working to put it out. Right now they have it about 25% surrounded. The restructures were destroyed. Thankfully, nobody has been hurt. Right now, Scripps Health is still offline due to a cyber attack over the weekend. It is affecting hundreds of work there, as well as people who are being treated. Scripps has not given details on how the cyber attack happened or what was affected. It says they are working to resolve issues related to the breach. Meanwhile, access to patient portals and other tech apps has been suspended. It's still unclear if hackers gain access to patient information. Okay, so here's an interesting challenge. Three Carlsbad High School students are giving up all social media for a week, and they are letting NBC7 come along for the ride. The rules are simple, no social media for the next week. Their parents and peers are in on it to keep them accountable. They do get to video document what it's like, the highs and lows, and report back to us. So why are they doing this? I, I never feel good after I get off of my phone, after being on my phone for about an hour or two. I'm just kind of like, where, where'd the day go? What happened? By the end of like the two hours that you're spending staring down with your neck facing down and your eyes being strained, you're, you feel kind of just like, okay, what's, what's next? Like, what did I just do? I feel like even when I try to do other things, it still manages to like weasel its way into my routine. So hopefully we can fix that this week. The students have since deleted their accounts from their phones and say they hope this pushes them out of their comfort zone. Bet it will. They, by the way, will keep us all updated with their progress and we'll catch up with all of them this time next week. The summer is going to be a challenge for anyone who owns a swimming pool. Right now, there's a major shortage of chlorine tablets used to keep pools clean and sanitized. The shortage started last year after a fire tore through a chemical plant in Louisiana that makes most of the country's supply. There was also a 20% uptick in the construction of residential pools. It's estimated more than half of pools nationwide use chlorine tablets. The Tokyo Olympics are right around the corner. We want to remind you that NBC7 is your Olympic station. You can watch the Tokyo Games here on NBC7 starting on July 23rd. There's a little rugby right there. Until then... Make sure to subscribe to our NBC7 podcast. It is called Olympic Dreams, San Diego to Tokyo. It's hosted by our buddy, Stephen Luke, our morning anchor. The first episode is now posted. Stephen will be introducing us to some of the biggest names in the Olympics 
from right here in San Diego. Before we sign off, here are your current temperatures. Dagmar has an extended forecast over at the weather section located on the main menu of our Roku and Apple TV app. That's going to do it for your nightly check-in. I'm Mark Mullen. Have a good night.